Hey guys, welcome to Budget EDH. I'm your host, Mike, and on this week's episode, we bring you a Siona Captain of the Pileus $100 budget deck tech. Siona is one, a green and a white for a legendary creature, human soldier out of Theros Beyond Death. When Siona enters the battlefield, look at the top seven cards of your library. You may reveal an aura card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Whenever an aura you control becomes attached to a creature you control, create a 1-1 white human soldier creature token. Siona is an enchantment matters commander that has a lot of synergies with auras in our deck, and we're going to focus heavily on that strategy as she does have a way of finding auras off the top of our library when you play her. And this deck is going to focus on ramping early so that we're able to get down some of our auras and start beating in for some commander damage with Siona. The ramp that we're going to lean heavily towards is enchantment ramp. Spells that enchant our lands and give us additional mana are going to be huge in this deck. And then we do have quite a bit of interaction in the form of enchantment interaction. We're going to have ways of exiling our opponent's permanents and creatures and getting rid of some problematic things that our opponents may play. And this does play well with an enchantress strategy. So we will have all of the best enchantress cards in our deck that give us some value whenever we play an enchantment that we're able to draw a card or get some sort of effect off of it. And this deck is going to be played as a Voltron strategy, although it does have some combo elements in it as well. Siona has an infinite combo with one of the auras that we have in our deck, which we will go over. And there are a couple more auras in our deck that give us a lot of value with Siona on the battlefield. And we'll go over all that later in the video. Let's start off this deck tech by talking about all the ramp that we include in this deck. Now we do want to focus on one converted mana cost mana ramp as our priority as Siona does cost three mana and we want to get her down as quickly as possible since we are playing a more Voltron slash aggro strategy we do want to start turning our creature sideways as quickly as possible to get some damage in on our opponents as Voltron and aggro strategies tend to be the hardest strategies to pull off in a four player game we do want to get the ball rolling quickly so first up we have Elvish Mystic and Land War Elves they're both a green mana and they're going to tap to add a green to your mana pool and then we have Avacyn's Pilgrim which is the same thing except it can tap to add a white tier mana pool. One thing to note here is Avacyn's Pilgrim is a human monk instead of an elf. If you are playing more elves in your deck and something like Priest of Titania, which we're not in this deck, Avacyn's Pilgrim will not help with that. And then next up we have Wild Growth. It's one green for an enchant land. Whenever enchanted land is tapped for mana, its controller adds an additional green to their mana pool. Utopia's Sprawl is one green for an enchant forest. When it enters the battlefield, you can choose a color. Whenever enchanted forest is tapped for mana, its controller adds one mana of the chosen color to his or her mana pool. And then Fertile Ground is one in a green for an enchant land. Whenever enchanted land is tapped for mana, its controller adds an additional one mana of any color. So these enchant lands are really good because they are auras and they have synergy with Siona. You will be able to pull these off the top of your library with that Siona trigger. And we do have a lot of cards in our deck that care about enchantments on the battlefield. And this is just an extra way of getting our enchantment count up on some of those cards. And then last but not least, we have one of the best cards in the game and it's Soul Ring. It's one generic mana for an artifact. Tap to add two colorless to your mana pool. Just a really great card to include in any deck and will more often than not include it. Even in an Enchantment Matters theme, it's still really great. Next up, we included some cards that give us the ability to reduce the cost of our enchantments and auras in the deck. So first up, we have Starfield Mystic. It's one and a white for a creature. Enchantment spells you cast cost one less to cast and whenever an enchantment you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter on Starfield Mystic. So not only is this going to reduce the cost of our spells, but if you're opponents have a way of dealing with your enchantments, your Starfield Mystic's actually going to get pretty big and give you an extra avenue of getting some damage in. Herald of the Pantheon is one in a green for a creature. Enchantment spells you cast cost one less to cast. And then whenever you cast an enchantment spell, you gain a life. This gives you some additional value in giving you some life whenever you play that enchantment, which is good too. And then Danith the Capacian Paragon is two and a white for a legendary creature. It has first strike, vigilance, and lifelink. And aura and equipment spells you cast cost one less to cast. Not only does this reduce the cost of your aura spells, this is actually a really great creature to attach auras to as she does have a lot of keyword abilities on her. Having Vigilance, Lifelink, and then also First Strike is a really great creature to enchant. Next up, let's talk about all the interaction that we have in this deck. Now we are going to put more of an emphasis on enchantment interaction as we do have a lot of cards that have synergy with enchantments being on the battlefield. And enchantment removal is very powerful. It does give you a way of exiling your opponent's permanent 
permanents and or creatures, and that's very strong. The only downside is, is if your opponents do sweep the board of enchantments, a lot of those permanents will come back to the battlefield. So that is one thing to note. We're willing to take the risk in this deck as we do get so much benefit from it. So first up, we have Oblivion Ring. It's two and a white for an enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, exile another target non-land permanent. And when it leaves the battlefield, return the exiled card to the battlefield under its owner's control. Vanishing Light's very similar. It's two and a white. When it enters the battlefield, exile target non-land permanent and opponent controls until Banishing Light leaves the battlefield. The only difference with this is the wording on the card. Oblivion Ring has two separate triggers. It's going to put the trigger on the stack to exile another target non-land permanent. And then you can actually respond to that trigger and remove your Oblivion Ring right after. And that will actually exile the creature or permanent permanently. Something like Banishing Light, you can't do that with. And then Cast Out is three and a white for an enchantment that has flash. When it enters the battlefield, exile target non-land permanent and opponent controls until Cast Out leaves the battlefield. And this also has cycling for one white. You can discard it to draw a card. If you don't need it, you can get some additional value off of it, which is really good. Then we have Kenris Transformation. It's a new one out of Throne of Eldrain. It's one and a green for an enchant creature aura. When it enters the battlefield, draw a card. Enchanted creature loses all abilities and is a green elk creature with base power and toughness 3-3. Three, three. Darksteel Mutation is similar. It's one and a white for an enchant creature. Enchanted creature is an insect artifact creature with base power and toughness 0-1 and has indestructible and loses all other types, card types, and creature types. These are really great to play on your opponent's commanders. It will turn them off completely and they'll lose all abilities. And Dark Steel Mutation is really good because it makes the creature indestructible as well, which makes it really tough to get rid of. Aura of Silence is one white white for an enchantment. Artifact and enchantment spells your opponent's cast cost two more to cast, and you can sacrifice it to destroy target artifact or enchantment. This is a really nice stacks piece. If your opponents are playing an artifact or enchantment strategy, you can make their spells all cost a little bit more. And most players are playing some form of mana rocks in their deck, and this is going to make it a little bit more expensive to play. You also have the added benefit of being able to sacrifice this to get rid of any artifact or enchantment on the board. And then we have a couple of spells that remove creatures or enchantments, and the first one is Swords to Plowshares. It's one white for an instant, XL target creature its controller gains life equal to its power this is some of the best removal that you can get in the game for one mana you can remove any creature and then beast within and generous gift are both the same thing they're two and a green and two and a white respectively and they both destroy a permanent and then that player puts a three three creature onto the battlefield these are just really cheap efficient ways of dealing with any permanent that your opponent may play that you need to get rid of and then last but not least we did include one board wipe in the deck since we are playing a creature strategy we don't want too many of these and i did opt to go with one that had some upside in our deck and it's winds of wrath it's three white white for sorcery destroy all creatures that aren't enchanted they can't be regenerated since we are playing voltron and our commander is going to be enchanted almost all the time this is just a cheap way to get rid of all of the creatures on the battlefield next up let's talk about all the enchantress cards that we have in this deck now enchantress cards are cards that have whenever you play an enchantment you can draw a card so we did include all of the best ones in our deck there was one that we couldn't include due to cost which i'll go over at the end as a potential upgrade to to put into this deck and I would recommend putting it in. It's just a little bit too pricey for our $100 budget deck. So first up we have Verdurin Enchantress, Eidolon of Blossoms, and Insater Enchanter. And they all have the same ability that whenever you play an enchantment spell, you may draw a card. Eidolon of Blossoms is a little bit different because it's an enchantment creature and it has constellation. Whenever it enters the battlefield or another enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. This is going to actually draw you a card when you play it. So it is worth that extra mana that you're putting into it. And then we have two other cards that do the same thing. It's Mesa Enchantress and Enchantress's Presence. These both have the same text on them. Whenever you cast an enchantment spell, you may draw a card. And then Shram Senior Edificer is one and a white for a legendary creature. Whenever you cast an aura, equipment, or vehicle spell, draw a card. And we do have quite a few auras in this deck as we are playing a Voltron strategy based around auras. Satessian Champion is a new one out of Theros Beyond Death, and it's two and a green for a creature that has Constellation. Whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on Satessian Champion and draw a card. One thing to note here is that this is not an enchantment creature, so when this enters the battlefield, you will not get that draw like you would on Eidolon of Blossoms. And then Core Spirit Dancer is one and a white for a creature. It gets plus two plus two for each aura attached to it, and then whenever you cast an aura spell, you may draw a card. This is a really good stand in for your commander. If your commander gets removed too many times, you could play your Core Spirit Dancer, get a bunch of aura on it and you can swing in for a lot of damage as she is going to get bigger with every aura attached. 
Next up, let's talk about all the enchant creature auras that we have in this deck that we're going to attach to our creatures to get in for a lot of damage. So first up, we have Ethereal Armor. It's one white for an enchant creature. Enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one for each enchantment you control and has first strike. This is one of the more powerful ones, especially at one mana. This is going to pump your creatures for every enchantment that you have, and we do have 30 of them in the deck, so your creatures can get big very quickly with this card. Rancor is one of the best enchant creatures ever printed and it's one green for an enchant creature enchanted creature gets plus two plus zero and has trample and it has this really powerful text on there that when it's put into a graveyard from the battlefield you can actually return it to your hand this with an enchantress on the battlefield can draw you quite a few cards if your opponents are able to remove your rancor or you can bounce it to your hand Hyena Umbra is one white for an enchant creature. Enchanted creature gets plus one plus one and has first strike. And the important part of this is that it has totem armor on it. If enchanted creature would be destroyed, instead remove all damage from it and destroy this aura. So this will actually protect your creature at the cost of losing the Hyena Umbra, which is only one converted mana to save your creature, which is powerful. Next up, we have Spirit Mantle. It's one and a white for an enchant creature. Enchanted creature gets plus one plus one and has protection from creatures. This is a powerful enchantment to get through opposing blockers as your opponents will not be able to block your creature that's enchanted by this and will also be able to block any creature and not take any damage as well making this a very good card to include all that glitters is a new one out of throne of eldraine and it's one in a white for an enchant creature enchanted creature gets plus one plus one for each artifact and or enchantment you control this is similar to ethereal armor except you also get the added ability of pumping from your artifacts that you control as well and then daybreak core Coronet is white white for an enchant creature and this can only enchant creatures with another aura attached to it but it does give enchanted creature plus three plus three first strike vigilance and lifelink this is a very popular card in the boggle strategy in modern it's very powerful for just two converted mana cost it gives you a lot of value off of it then we have Snake Umbra. It's two and a white for an enchant creature. Enchanted creature gets plus one plus one and has whenever this creature deals damage to an opponent, you may draw a card. That ability on creatures is very powerful and this is a very good card to include. It also does have totem armor as well, so this will protect your creatures also. Shield of the Oversoul is two and a hybrid green white for an enchant creature. As long as enchanted creature is green, it gets plus one plus one and is indestructible. And as long as enchanted creature is white, it gets plus one plus one and has flying. So not only is this going to protect your creature, it's also going to give your creature evasion as well. Putting this on Siona is going to give you quite a bit of value. Gift of Immortality is two and a white for an enchant creature, and whenever enchanted creature dies, returning that card to the battlefield under its owner's control. Return Gift of Immortality to the battlefield attached to that creature at the beginning of your next end step. So you can put this on one of your creatures that you don't want to die. This card with Sun Titan is actually an infinite combo, as if you have a sacrifice outlet to sacrifice your Sun Titan and you have Gift of Immortality attached to it, you can sacrifice your Sun Titan. It's going to go to the graveyard, and Gift of Immortality is going to return it back to the battlefield. Now Gift of Immortality will return to the battlefield attached to that creature at the beginning of the next end step, but when Sun Titan enters the battlefield, you can actually return the Gift of Immortality right away. And if you have a sacrifice outlet, you can keep this loop going infinitely, which we do have a couple of in this deck which we will go over later in win conditions, but I just want to bring that up that that is an infinite combo. And in other strategies, you have stuff like Ashnot's Altar. This will give you infinite mana with that. You have stuff like Zulaport Cutthroat and Viserysir. You sack your Sun Titan and then you get infinite drains off of it. We do have one card in this deck that it's infinite with, but the possibilities are endless with any sacrifice outlet and something that will win the game when a creature enters the battlefield or dies. Next up, we have Unquestioned Authority. It's two and a white for an enchantment creature when it enters the battlefield draw a card enchanted creature has protection from creatures this is a really great way of getting your voltron commander in past blockers and also gives you the added benefit of drawing a card. Unflinching Courage is one, a green and a white for an enchant creature. Enchanted creature gets plus two, plus two, and has trample and lifelink. And then Battle Mastery is two and a white for an enchant creature, and it gives your enchanted creature double strike. These are all really great ores to include. It's going to pump our commander up and help us get in for a lot of damage. Next up, we have Ancestral Mask. It's two and a green for an enchant creature. Enchanted creature gets plus two, plus two for each other enchantment on the battlefield. This card's going to get out of hand since we have so many enchantments in our deck, and it's going to pump your creature by two for every single one. This is one of the better auras in the deck. And then Sage's Reverie is three and a white for an enchanted creature. When Sage's Reverie enters the battlefield, draw a card for each aura you control that's attached to a creature. Now that's very powerful just by itself. And then enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one for each aura you control that's attached to a creature as well. 
this is a very strong card in the deck. It's going to give you some card advantage and also pump your creature up big for all the enchantments you have. Eidolon of Countless Battles is one white white for an enchantment creature spirit, and it has bestow for two white white. And bestow is, if you cast this card for its bestow cost, it's an aura spell with enchant creature. It becomes a creature again if it's not attached to a creature. So if your opponents remove your creature from the game that this is attached to, this will actually come in as a creature. Eidolon of Countless Battles and enchanted creature each get plus one plus one for each creature you control and plus one plus one for each aura you control this card's very powerful because we are playing not only an aura strategy and we have 30 enchantments in our deck but we also get a token every time we attach an aura to one of our creatures with siona on the battlefield so your creature's going to get plus one plus one for each of those which makes it very powerful and then last but not least, we do have Bear Umbra. It's two green green for an enchant creature. Enchanted creature gets plus two plus two and has, whenever this creature attacks, untap all lands you control and also has totem armor. Having this ability in your deck gives you so much flexibility in that you can spend all of your mana, swing in for your creature, and then you get to untap it all and you have a lot more mana to spend in your next main phase. Just some really great value to have in this deck. There are a lot of combos you can play with this card, but we don't have those combos in this deck. It's purely just for the value. Since we are playing a Voltron strategy with a bunch of auras in our deck, it is a very fragile strategy. If our opponent removes our creature that's suited up with all those auras, all those auras will go back to the graveyard and then we'll have to start all over again. So we want some ways of getting those auras from the graveyard back to the battlefield as a safety net in case our opponents are able to remove them. Next up, we're going to talk about those cards that we included that give us that ability. And the first one I want to talk about is Nomad Mythmaker. It's two and a white for a creature. You can pay one and tap it, put target aura card in a graveyard into play attached to a creature you control. Now this has the added ability of actually getting auras out of your opponent's graveyards and putting it onto creatures that you control as well. So if your opponents have auras in their graveyard, you can use this to actually attach them to your own creatures, getting some additional value that way. Next up, we have Open the Vaults. It's four white white for sorcery. Return all artifact and enchantment cards from all graveyards to the battlefield under their owner's control. And then it says auras with nothing to enchant remain in graveyards. So you want to make sure that you have creatures on the battlefield to attach those auras to. And then Retether is three and a white. Return each aura card from your graveyard to play. Only creatures can be enchanted this way. Next up, let's talk about some of the ways that we're able to find some of the auras in our deck. There are some powerful combos in this deck. We want to have some ways in our deck that we can assemble that combo quickly. And one way of doing that is by having some tutors in the deck. So first up, we have Open the Armory. It's one and a white for sorcery. Search your library for an aura or equipment card. Reveal it and put it into your hand. Then shuffle your library. Now our combo is an aura-based combo. So this will be able to find that. And all the tutors that we included have the ability to find the card that we're looking for. And then next up, we have Heliod's Pilgrim. It's two and a white for a creature. When it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for an aura card, reveal it, put it into your hand, and then shuffle your library. And then Totem Guide Heart of Beast is four and a white for a creature. When it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for an aura card, reveal it, put it into your hand, and then shuffle your library. And next up, we have a creature tutor. It's Eladomri's Call. It's a green and a white for an instant. Search your library for a creature card, reveal that card, put it into your hand, and then shuffle your library. This will be able to get you an enchantress if you need some card draw, or you can go and get your Heliod's Pilgrim so that you can find your combo piece and then combo off that way. Three Dreams is four and a white for a sorcery. Search your library for up to three aura cards with different names, reveal them, put them into your hand, and then shuffle your library. This is a very powerful way of getting our best aura cards out of our library and into our hand. And then plea for guidance is five and a white for a sorcery. Search your library for up to two enchantment cards, reveal them, put them into your hand, then shuffle your library. And one thing to know here is this will get any enchantment, not just auras. So you can get some of the powerful enchantments that we include in this deck that are going to create us some tokens and give us other additional value. Next up, let's talk about some of the powerful utility cards that we include in this deck that give us a lot of value. And first up, we have Skull Clamp. It's one colorless for an artifact equipment equip creature gets plus one minus one whenever equipped creature dies draw two cards and then you can equip for one since siona makes one one tokens skull clamp is just going to let us draw two cards for one mana for equipping any of those tokens up it's just a really powerful card to include into any token strategy especially ones that have one toughness next up we have sagarda's aid it's one white for an enchantment you may cast aura and equipment spells as though they had flash and whenever an equipment enters the battlefield under your control you may attach it to target creature you control sagarda's aid is just a really great card that lets us play auras 
at instant speed. We can use them to save our creatures if we need to. Next up, we have Sigil of the Empty Throne. It's three white white for an enchantment. Whenever you cast an enchantment spell, create a 4-4 white angel creature token with flying. Sigil the Empty Throne in a Enchantment Manners deck is a very powerful card to include. We do have about 30 enchantments in this deck. If you get this card down early in the game, this is going to accrue you a ton of value. It's going to put a lot of creatures on the board that are going to help us pressure our opponent's life totals. Next up, we have Umbra Mystic. It's two and a white for a creature. Or is attached to permanents you control have totem armor. And then totem armor is, if an enchanted permanent you control would be destroyed, instead remove all damage from it and destroy an aura attached to it. One thing to note here is you can just destroy one aura and that will satisfy the totem armor ability. Umber Mystic is going to make our creatures incredibly difficult to remove. And if you have this on the battlefield with Siona out and quite a few auras, Siona is going to be able to save herself multiple times with all those auras attached to her. Next up, we have Heavenly Blade Master. It's five and a white for a creature that has flying and double strike. When it enters the battlefield, you may attach any number of auras and equipment you control to it. Other creatures you control get plus one, plus one for each aura and equipment attached to Heavenly Blade Master. Let's just say you've accrued some tokens off of Siona's ability and they're on the battlefield and you play this card and you move all your auras over to it. You can give all those tokens plus one, plus one for each equipment attached to the Blade Master and you can get in for a ton of damage with this card. It's just a very powerful card to play and gives us a lot of flexibility in how we're dealing our damage to our opponents. And then the last utility card I want to talk about is a powerful one, and it's Sun Titan. It's four white white for a creature with vigilance. Whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, you may return target permanent card with convert a mana cost three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. This creature gives us the ability to recur back some of the auras or other enchantments that we may have lost over the course of the game to our opponents removing either the enchantment or the creature to get rid of them. And it's going to come down and get us a, an aura back and put it straight onto the battlefield or or it can get you some other things too, like a fetch land or a creature that you may have lost, like an enchantress. There's just a lot of value in this card, especially at the budget price that it's at. Next up, let's talk about a couple cards that have really great synergy with our commander and are going to give us a way of generating a lot of tokens if we have these on the battlefield attached to Siona. The first one is Flickering Ward. It's one white for an enchant creature. When you play Flickering Ward, choose a color. Enchanted creature gains protection from the chosen color, and then you can pay a white and return flickering ward to its owner's hand. This card on its own gives you a great way of protecting your creatures from some problematic removal spells. It also helps you get past blockers, but having the ability to return this to your hand, if you have some white mana open, you can actually play this and flicker it back to your hand and you can actually generate as many tokens as you have one white mana to play this spell for and bounce it. It's going to add a lot of tokens to the battlefield. If you get this card early in the game, you can start to get your engine going by equipping Siona and getting some tokens on the battlefield early. The next one I want to talk about is Flicker Form. It's one in a white for an enchant creature, and it has two white white, exile enchanted creature, and all auras attached to it. At the beginning of the next end step, return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control. If you do, return the other cards exiled this way to the battlefield under their owner's control attached to that creature. Flicker form on Siona or another creature with Siona on the battlefield basically is going to let you flicker your creature out and all auras on it and return it back to the battlefield on the end step. Now this is great for protecting your creatures against a board wipe or a removal spell as it does wait till the end step for the creature to come back. But you could actually play this for value as well. You could flicker your creature out with let's just say five enchantments on it and with Siona on the battlefield when it returns on the end step it's going to create five tokens because all those auras are going to enchant again and Sion is going to see that and you're going to make five tokens and this is just a really great way of getting a lot of value and also protecting your creature. Next up we're going to talk about the infinite combo that we included in this deck and it's a very powerful one with Siona and it involves the card Shielded by Faith. It's one white white for an enchant creature. Enchanted creature has indestructible and whenever a creature enters the battlefield you may attach Shielded by Faith to that creature. 
Now, how the combo works is if you have Siona on the battlefield, if you play Shielded by Faith and attach it to your Siona, Siona is going to make a 1-1 human soldier token. And then Shielded by Faith is going to put a trigger on the stack that you can attach Shielded by Faith to that creature, which you're going to do. And it's going to make another human soldier and another human soldier. And it's just going to be an infinite loop until you decide to stop. The good thing about this combo is it is a May ability. So you don't have to have a way of removing either the Shielded by Faith or Siona from the battlefield in order to stop the combo. You can choose to stop whenever you'd like. Now, the downside to this is these creatures don't have haste, so you can't win through combat damage with this combo. So you do need to have another way of winning the game or a way in your deck to give haste to your creatures. Now, this deck can't fit in the really great haste enabler that I would want to include in this deck, which is Concordant Crossroads. It's out of our budget and we just can't fit it in. But if you do have it, I recommend putting that card into this deck as you will actually be able to have another way of winning the game through combat damage with these soldier tokens. We did include two ways to win the game if we assemble that combo. We do have to have one of these other cards onto the battlefield to win right on the spot. Otherwise, we would have to pass the turn and hope that nothing happens to us so we can swing in with our infinite soldiers. The two cards that we included are Altar of the Brood, which is one colorless for an artifact. Whenever another permanent enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent puts the top card of his or her library into his graveyard. So this, with that combo and those tokens entering, it's going to mill your opponent's libraries out and put them into your graveyard. At that point, you could pass the turn and your opponents will go to draw and they would lose unless they have an instant speed way of winning the game in their upkeep before their draw or something like angel's grace to save themselves for a turn and then the second way is with a similar card it's altar of dementia it's two colorless for an artifact sacrifice a creature target player puts a number of cards equal to the sacrifice creature's power from the top of their library into their graveyard so you can make all those tokens and then sacrifice them all and mill your opponents out that way this is also the combo card that works with Sun Titan as a sacrifice outlet and a win con in one with Gift of Immortality. If you have the Gift of Immortality Sun Titan combo assembled with Altar Dementia, you just keep sacrificing your Sun Titan Altar to mill out your opponent's libraries. And then you would pass the turn and your opponents would go to their turns and not have any cards in their library and lose the game. Last but not least, let's quickly talk about the mana base that we included in this deck. Now, this is a two-color deck, so we don't want to include a lot of tap lands in here. So we're going to focus primarily on lands that enter the battlefield untapped, as we don't really need to have that many dual lands in this deck. So first up, we have three lands that are going to tap for both of your commander's colors. Sun Petal Grove enters the battlefield tapped unless you already control a forest or a plains. Canopy Vist, you have to have two basic lands on the battlefield, or it will enter tapped. And then Command Tower just enters untapped and taps for both colors. Then we have Warp Landscape. It's tap it to add a colorless to your mana pool, and you can pay two and tap it, sacrifice it, search your library for a basic land card, put it onto the battlefield tap, then shuffle your library. This is a cheap fetch land that you can put into your deck to get any basic land out. And then Cross and Verge enters the battlefield tapped, and you can tap it to add a colorless to your mana pool, or you can pay two and tap it, search your library for a forest card and a plains card, put them onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle your library. Next up, we have a really powerful utility land that's perfect for this type of deck, and it's Hall of Heliod's Generosity. It's a legendary land out of Modern Horizons, and you can tap it to add a colorless to your mana pool, or you can pay one and a white, tap it, put target enchantment card from your graveyard on top of your library. Auras are very fragile because if your opponents remove your creatures, those auras are going to go back to the graveyard. So having something like Hall of Heliod's Generosity to get some of those powerful auras or other enchantment cards that may have been destroyed over the course of the game is a very powerful card to include and it is budget right now, so I'd recommend picking those up. And then last but not least, we have the basic lands in this deck. Uh, we have 16 planes and 13 forests. This gives us 35 lands in our deck. There is a bigger emphasis on planes in this deck, a lot of mana costs that have two white in their mana cost and not as much in green. So next up, I want to talk about a couple of upgrades that I would include in this deck. I'm not going to talk about the cards I would add to the mana base. If you have any of the untapped green or white dual lands like Temple Garden, definitely include that into your deck as it's going to help speed up your deck a little bit. It's up to you if it's worth the cost. If you already have them lying around, definitely include it. I'm just going to talk about a couple of the spells that I think are worth the extra money or if you have them to put into the deck. It's going to make the deck a little bit more powerful. So the first card I would include is Idyllic Tutor. It's two and a white for a sorcery. Search your library for an enchantment card, reveal it, and put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. 
This card is printed in this set and it was about $30 before the reprint. Right now it's sitting at about six bucks and I do see this card going down. So if you can wait a little bit, it'll probably go to around three bucks in my opinion, since it is printed at rare. It's not a card that's played in standard, modern, legacy, any of that stuff. It's just a commander card and it's been so long since it's been printed, it's very scarce. And now this is gonna put copies into everybody's hands who wants it. And this card's basically going to find you all of your combo pieces. Um, it's going to find you your Shielded by Faith. It's going to find you the Gift of Immortality or any other strong enchantment that you want to play. It can even find you one of your enchantresses in Eidolon of Blossoms as well. It's a very powerful card to include in only six bucks. It's definitely worth the upgrade, especially if you open one in a pack in this set. The next card I would include is the last Enchantress card that we couldn't fit into the budget because it's just a little bit too expensive, and it's Argothian Enchantress. It's one and a green for a creature with Shroud. This creature can't be the target of spells or abilities, and whenever you cast an enchantment spell, draw a card. In my opinion, you can't have too many Enchantresses in this deck because it is such a powerful ability. Every enchantment that you play is going to draw you a card, and you do want to have a lot of ways of drawing cards and having a good engine going so that you can get more auras attached to your creature and get in for damage. And Argothian Enchantress is only 10 bucks. At one point, this card was around $30 when Tuvasa came out and it has gone down from 30 to 10 so this is a good time to pick it up. It could go up based on this deck if people build it and enjoy the deck. The next card that I would look at including into this deck is another tutor card and it's Worldly Tutor. It's one green for an instant. Search your library for a creature card, reveal that card, shuffle your library, and then put that card on top of it. This is a really great way to find Sun Titan if you need some recursion back or an Enchantress and put it onto the top of your library. It's a great card to include if you have one. It does cost quite a bit for an uncommon, but it hasn't been printed since 6th edition, so it's been quite a long time since this card has come out. The next card I would put into this deck if you had one is Enlightened Tutor. It's one white for an instant. Search your library for an artifact or enchantment card, reveal that card, shuffle your library, then put that card on top of it. This is going to find you all of your combo pieces in the deck. It's going to find you the artifact win cons, and it's also going to find you your Shielded by Faith or Gift of Immortality, and it's just a very great card to put in the deck. It does cost $23 now, so it has gone up quite a bit from when it was reprinted in Eternal Masters, but that has been some time, and it's a commander staple, so it's in high demand. But if you have one, definitely put it into the deck as it's such a powerful card. And then the last card that I would include in this deck if you had it or if you were willing to spend a little bit of money on it is Sterling Grove. It's a green and a white for an enchantment. All other enchantments you control can't be the targets of spells or abilities. And then you can pay one and sacrifice it. Search your library for an enchantment card and reveal that card. Shuffle your library, then put that card on top of it. This gives all your auras and enchantments shroud, which is very powerful, and that your opponents will have a tough time removing those cards from the game. Now they can remove this card and then get rid of all of those enchantments at that point. And this does also give you the ability to tutor up an enchantment card from your library and put it on top. So you can find that combo piece with this card as well, making this a very powerful card. This has gone down in price a little bit again since Tuvasa was printed, which put it up over $20, but now it's sitting at $9 bucks and this has been a long time since this has been reprinted um, back in invasion block i want to take a moment to say thank you to all my patrons and all my supporters i couldn't make these videos without you guys and i really appreciate it if you guys are interested in becoming a patron check us out on patreon.com slash there's a lot of different rewards and tiers over on patreon and we do giveaways pretty frequently over there and we would love to have some more support for our channel to keep things going thank you guys so much for watching this video today let us know in the comments down down below what you thought of the deck if there's any cards that you would include that maybe we missed we'd love to hear from you guys and let us know if there's any decks that you want to see in upcoming videos we're always looking for new ideas on decks and content to make we'll see you guys next time